At first glance, the numbering system can look a little baffling, but there is a very strong logic behind it, which hopefully I can explain to you. Most of the tables have four pairs of characters to describe them. There are two which don't, that's the systems table and the products table, and they each have five pairs of characters to describe them. The first two characters for each table are the actual description of the table themselves. So CO, for example, is a complexes table. SL is the spaces location table, and PR is the products table. These characters are always alpha. After the initial alpha characters, there are then either three or four pairs of numeric characters. This gives us an opportunity to use from 0 up to 99 for each group of objects that we're looking at. The first pair of numbers describe the group of objects, the second pair, the subgroup, and for most of the tables, the third pair is the actual object themselves. In the system and products tables, the groupings are group, subgroup, sector, and then the final pair is the object itself. Having 99 as the maximum number within each group hopefully allows us to accommodate everything that we need to within each of those sectors. At the last level, we use a system of coding everything alphabetically. The reason for this is that when we need to add a new code in, we're able then to add it in in an appropriate place rather than just tacking it on the end of an existing list. It may not immediately seem that alphabetical is the obvious way, but in terms of flexibility for adding new things in, it is definitely the most sensible way of working. For example, if somebody highlights the fact that we don't have a steam heating system listed, we can go to the listing for heating systems and add a steam heating system in under the code that would be appropriate for the letter S. So you have a code for heating, which is SS underscore 60 underscore 40 underscore 37. And that then would be extended to SS60 underscore 40 underscore 37 underscore 85 for the steam heating system. Once you start using the tables, you'll find that several of the tables are arranged congruently. So looking at the complexes, entities, activities and spaces location table, you'll find that the group numbers for different sectors are the same throughout. This diagram shows you what sectors are covered or what function are covered by each of the groups. You'll find if you look in the complexes table for an educational example, for example, you'll find them under 25 underscore 10. If you then change that CO character to EN, you will find then that the entities for education are there as well. Looking at the elements function table and systems table, these are arranged in a congruent manner, which is different from the initial four tables. This diagram illustrates the group numbers and the topics covered in each of those groups. When you come to look at the products table, you'll find that this doesn't match the other tables at all. And there's a reason for this. Firstly, the products table is the largest table, inevitably, and there's a huge number of different objects that we've included. But the second reason is that some of those objects are applicable to many different systems, and therefore it would not be possible to include the function of each object within the products table. For example, if you're looking at copper pipe work, it can be used in gas supply systems, hot and cold water supply systems and heating systems. So inevitably, that same type of copper pipe needs to be chosen separately for each of those different functions. So hopefully that's clarified how we've numbered these tables and make a lot more sense for you.